All right. Thank you for staying with the daybreak. We're starting this conversation right now. And joining me in studio is Charles Oweno. He's a police spokesperson to talk about the state of security. This is starting right now on these issues. And thanks for making time for us this morning. So right now, as it stands, what is the state of security? How is it looking like with the curfew in place and everything else? Uh, thank you so much, Shriva. I think uh, the state of security is quite good. Uh, usually, we look at our state of security on several aspects. Yeah. Uh, what the major uh, global problem that we have had, uh, which has now been overtaken by corona, has been terrorism. That has been our major problem. Yeah. But our uh, counterterrorism uh, cells are working very, very well. And uh, they are up to the task. They are doing their level best to ensure that we are safe. And I think we have done fairly well, okay. uh, including along uh, the borders. Our border patrol units are doing very, very well, all the way from Lamu to Mandera. Yeah. Uh, equally, other areas are areas of uh, cattle rustling, uh, which is also uh, doing fairly well. Uh, we don't have major incidences of uh, cattle rustling. Issues of robberies and uh, car thefts and so on uh, have completely uh, gone down. Yeah. So uh, what we have, the only issues they were seeing is maybe uh, murders here and there, uh, which are organized crimes, uh, people planning or uh, to kill others. We have seen uh, incidences in Kiambu. You saw the latest incident that took place uh, the other day. Uh, those have uh, very little to do with insecurity because these are planned murders, uh, organized crimes. Yeah. Uh, what is most important in such incidences is are we able to break through and get the culprits and charge them. I think the DCI has been doing very well yeah. on that. So I can say our status of security is very good, yeah. and uh, we urge Kenyans to keep on uh, supporting the state of security. Yes, we have been entrusted to do the work, yeah. but we need the support of the common Mananchi uh, to ensure that our security is good. Our community policing systems, uh, police talking to individuals, individuals talking to police, and ensuring that uh, uh, we are up to the task to ensure that uh, we get all the information uh, at the right time. So uh, with curfew, yes, it also supports quite a lot because we have uh, little movements yeah. uh, at night. And uh, when we have less movements at night, we have less of people drinking late because when people drink late at night, we, when we don't have curfews, mm -hmm. and maybe people go drinking late at night, uh, we get very grisly accidents, uh, individuals rolling, uh, killing, dying, and so on and so forth. Okay. So with curfew also, you find when we have limited movements, yeah. then we also have limited uh, petty crimes, okay. like mugging. So I think so far so good, unless you have something that I don't know. No, <laughs> you're the police officer, you would know more than me. So, <laughs> no, no, but no, you're, also you're, some you're one inch, you may have a lot of information. <laughs> there's some instances have. that we've seen of police uh, turning the gun on themselves and killing their colleagues. The most recent one was in Nyamira. Are you concerned of these incidences and what is the solution going forward? I think this has been a, a general concern, yeah. uh, but always I have a different uh, way that I look at it. We look at uh, suicides across board, across uh, the community. We have very high cases of suicide amongst individuals. The only difference uh, when it comes to police it is the tool of execution uh, that brings in a lot of attention. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, the same way an individual Kenyan who has his issues commit suicide is the same way an individual policeman who also has his social issues may commit suicide. But the difference is that the common Mwanainchi uh, uses the rope or jumps into a river. Uh, the policeman uses his gun against himself, uh, on himself. Uh, so we have, we have those incidences, but I want it to be understood yeah. that it is a crossboard. It's a psycho problem with almost all of us across board the country. Yeah. The number of suicides we have are very high. Uh, but also there are other issues that may border in discipline. If an individual uses his firearm against his colleague, uh, maybe it's a, it's a common indiscipline issue that an individual may have. Yeah. So we treat them at that uh, personal or individual level but we have had very high suicide cases yeah. in the communities and also in the police. And you remember, uh, we have even had committees uh, to look into this. But you can, you can be sure that uh, social pressure yeah. uh, has no limits to a particular profession. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. Let, let me play a sound bite here that has uh, sparked off a lot of conversations. It was from Deputy President William Ruto, and then get your re reactions on this. Listen to what he had to say. To ask the IG and the police service, the Constitution is very clear that the police is an independent service, and therefore they must discharge their responsibility as required of them by the Constitution, and they will carry the responsibility if they don't measure up to what the Constitution expects of them. What is your reaction to that? I don't think he has a specific complaint yeah. from, from that statement. He has just said that uh, we are an independent service. That is what the Constitution provides, mm. and that we'll take responsibility. Yes, we have always taken responsibility yeah. where we don't do our work properly. You've seen police officers being taken to court for doing the wrong things. So from his statement, uh, I have no comment because he has not complained against uh, an individual. If he has an, a, a particular complaint, then uh, it would be different. But equally, at yeah. my level, I'm not supposed to answer a deputy president. Okay. His position is too senior for me to answer at my level as a police spokesperson. But are you concerned when the executive almost alludes to the fact that the police may be biased in handling the political issues in the country? Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, there's nothing wrong to his opinion. Mm -hmm. He's a Kenyan. He has the freedom to come up with his opinion. But yeah. if there's a specific complaint, then it will be handled by institutions yeah. that handle complaints. We, 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 we are a good institution that we have a civilian oversight authority yeah. uh, that handles complaints against us. And if there's a specific complaint mm -hmm. against a specific officer, then definitely uh, there are institutions to deal with it. Okay. But, but at my level, uh, to start answering uh, a level of a deputy president, I, I think I think that will be that that will not be appropriate. Okay. Yes. But this and, and also to be set um, uh, against his statement is yeah. also not appropriate. That would be dealt with. At a, and if it's a political statement, yeah. then it would be managed by uh, people of his level who are politicians, okay. not us. As we are supposed to remain neutral. And remember, we take care of him. We protect the deputy president. Mm. So th there is nothing that uh, you can say that we have in particular against him. We cannot be against him. At the same time, we are giving him protection. It can't work. Okay. And he holds a very important position of national unity that uh, we cannot discuss, yeah. especially in such a forum. Okay. Yes. I'm bringing this up because it's a common conversation that's going on and it even affects public perception as well because there's another statement here by Suzanne Kihika that also mentioned this issue to do with the police. Let's listen to that. Tulikuwa na uchaguzi na the inspector general akakawa akatumia polisi vibaya wakatupatia gas na wakatupiga lakini wananchi walisimama imara na wakapigia haslas wenzao kura kwa hivyo hata nyinyi nataka kuwaomba as we continue na hizi mashida tuendelee kushikilia hasla this was a complaint, especially in Kabuchai, London, and Matungu, that the police are specifically using extreme force yes. on the politicians. What is the true position? If, if, if you look at uh, the level of misbehavior by politicians at times, you, you, you saw what happened in Matungu. You saw them removing people from cars and beating innocent Wananchi in the name of trying to uh, win elections. So if you look at that in itself, we don't, we don't need to go, at, as policemen, we don't need to argue with politicians mm -hmm. as we are action oriented. Uh, if, if you go beating an individual, uh, then we arrest you and we charge you accordingly. We have a responsibility to protect each and every person, mm -hmm. but we will not get involved as a service to start exchanging. Uh, with politicians. If we arrest you and we charge you and we are of the opinion that what we have done is not right, then definitely you have uh, a place to uh, uh, put up that problem. But as usual, political competition has a lot of issues. Uh, many a times, if it does not favor you, you will always uh, tend to complain. Yeah. But if you look at all the cases across board, if you go to Kabushai, you go to Matungu, we did not just make arrests to 
people of political of certain political affiliations. Mm -hmm. We arrested each from every team. Any person who committed an offense was arrested, and we still have people recording statements yeah. who were assaulted by persons that they actually know the people whom they knew, so and so assaulted me. People are still recording statements in other cases, and we are still making uh, arrests and charging people before court. But what I can tell you yeah. is that by elections, we are bound to get those kind of cheeky behavior. Because in by elections, you find that you are just carrying out by elections in maybe two or three places. So all politicians affiliated to various political parties will group up to go and drum support to their people and try to use all means. But when we come to general elections, yeah. each person will be struggling in his ward, his constituency, his county. Mm -hmm. So you will not see uh, this kind of groupings because every person will be busy trying to get a vote for himself. Yeah. But by elections, you expect some of this misbehavior to take place. But we are not taking sides. We are trying to support uh, each and every. This Kenya has very wide democratic space. Yeah. And we do not want conflict between police and politicians. We work together as a team. They have a role to play. They are, most of them, they are legislatures, and uh, they have a very big role to play. It's an independent wing of government. We, 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 we are a wing in the executive that yeah. support uh, the country in terms of security. So we don't want conflicts. And uh, sometimes politicians tend to create conflict. For example, you know very well, if you're supposed to, like now we have this pandemic, um, the COVID-19. You know very well that social distancing is very important yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and ensuring that we follow health protocols. And then suddenly you just go and do the wrong things, surely. What do you expect the police to do? Ours is to enforce. And, 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 and we, don't, uh, we don't say, but we, we, we have no reason to have conflicts with, with, with politicians. But we are very firm yeah. that if you commit an offense, we are going to arrest you. Yeah. And we'll deal with you. Uh, according to the law. You may shout, you may jump, you may lie down, yeah. but we have to take very firm, uh, very firm decisions. Yeah. I know uh, the IGP is a very humble uh, person, but he's firm. He, he does his work firmly, and he does not go out there to the field to arrest people. He has commanders who do those jobs, and he gives firm instructions to those commanders. But you don't expect the level of an IGP to start uh, much shouting with people, exchanging with people. Uh, the, the position is a very high profile position. Yeah. It's a position that uh, takes care of security of the country. And therefore, he must remain with that kind of demeanor mm -hmm. that he has. Okay. Yes. There are some people who think that there's a bit of laxity sometimes. For example, with the Rashid Echesa situation where he was uh, accused of slapping an IBC official. Of course, that case is in court now. But why wasn't he arrested on the spot? The police officers were right there. Uh, it depends how many police officers were there. You could find that this is a strip, and we just have maybe two police officers. And uh, you are dealing with uh, an armed person who looks a rogue. Yeah. And uh, you had, you had, you had, he, he has maybe 20, 30 other persons who are equally armed. What may happen is, because what is important is we have arrested you. Yeah. <coughs> But we look at the condition. Is, is the condition because if 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 maybe uh, the two officers would struggle with him, and he also has support, and yeah. he withdraws his gun, the next thing would be to shoot him, and kill him. What will be the implication if we shot him and we killed him? Let's assume he drew his gun because if you draw a gun at us, then there's no shortcut. You you draw your gun at a policeman, yeah. there's no shortcut. The policeman must defend himself. I will shoot you. And if that happens, what would be the implication? So sometimes you may feel that there is in action, but it's a tactic of yeah. ensuring he has already assaulted the person. We will definitely going to arrest him. But you look at the situation as is it as it is, because sometimes you are dealing with somebody who is not properly literate, yeah. and, 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 and you may get into a conflict with that kind of a person for nothing. So the best thing would be if our officers realize that they, there are only two, yeah. and the force they have is the firearm. And these people are very many, and this person is armed. They may decide to let you go, and 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 call for reinforcement and arrest you. After all, it was an assault. Yeah. But that level, whatever you are trying to say, we would have done it on the spot. The implication would have been terrible. The okay. person could even have lost his life. Okay. Yeah, because we don't play around when it comes to drawing guns and 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 playing around with the security of the country. We yeah. we don't. Yeah. So. 
we are, we are, we, I think the officers uh, were simply careful. They did the right thing. And uh, that was the best they could have done. Yeah. We After did all, see, he was arrested. We did actually see some of them, and the clips are playing even on, on air right now. We did yes. see some of them drawing guns there. Yes. What is, this, what is the, now the way forward after some people drew guns and there was a bit of a conflict push and pull? It's, it's simple. It's misuse of a civilian firearm. If you've been licensed to use the firearm, it's for self-defense. What was the insecurity you had? There's a bit of excitement yeah. with civilians carrying firearms. Uh, people... Uh, tend to get those firearms for prestige. Yeah. Uh, that they think now I have a firearm. It, it doesn't matter. If you, what, what matters is who draws his gun first. So the position is they are using it for prestige. But what we have done, we've withdrawn them. Yeah. They no longer have them. So any person who will misuse his firearm, it will go. But they should also realize that it is, it is, it is, it is, a, it is delicate for them. Because you may withdraw your, your firearm and find a first officer especially the young officers who are still excited equally, they'll shoot you. So you must also protect your, your life. Okay. The, the officer will be arrested, will be charged, but you are dead. Yeah. How will it help us? Okay. So what we are saying is that people must be able to behave. And uh, you don't use firearms for prestige. Yeah. Use it for your self-defense where necessary. You do know on that same day, Senator Malala was accusing a police officer of allegedly stealing his money, and that was also caught on record. Yes. What was your reaction to this? Doesn't it then taint the image of the police service? Uh, fine. Uh, it may, it may not. Because if you accused an officer for stealing his money, what else has happened? Is it true that the officer stole his money? Is it true or it was drama? Because if it is true the officer stole his money, then definitely he has made... Uh, a report to that to that effect yeah and I, I, I don't think the officer would steal his money but if an officer steals money then we take action or maybe we are the only institution that arrest our people every day and charge and take before court we arrest officers because the question is when you commit an offense yeah we cease to handle you as an officer we see you as any other criminal and you are charged accordingly yeah. yes and and there's nothing so special it's only that Ex as officers are expected to behave in certain standards by the virtue of having been trained and so on. But there are some inherent characters of individuals that yeah. you may not remove from them. Yeah. So let's handle such uh, matters as, 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 as uh, uh, normal issues that must be handled yeah. within the precincts of, of the law. So there's, there's also the public perception and then there's the reality on the ground and that's the part that I want you to bring out for us because we may not understand the full spectra of it all. There's accusations made on television and then there's evidence that is actually tabled for action. But with what we've witnessed recently with the by-elections, would you say the police service is prepared for handling the next elections that's coming through? First there's going to be the referendum and then there's 2022. We've done elections. What has changed? We are the same policemen who are carrying out elections in the previous years. Yeah. According to you, what has changed that make you feel that we are not prepared? I've just explained to you yeah. that by-elections are very tricky elections. Because in by-election, you find that all political parties troop their members of parliament, their senators, their governors, their MCAs, to go to that particular place where there is an election. We are having an election in Machakos, I suppose, tomorrow. And, yeah. and, and, and there are chances of trying to see members of political parties. So the only thing that maybe we are going to do now is we are not going to be generous uh, with space. What we are going to do is uh, each political party will have agents. And when each political party has agents, then we will only allow the agents. Yeah. We will not allow uh, any other, because we have seen it, there's precedence. We allow them into an area, because you are not a voter in that area. You are, you, are, you are a senator or a governor from Nyanza or from Western. What are you doing in Machakos on election day? You don't even have, uh, you don't even have a, a vote yeah. in Machakos. So the only thing is we may, we may decide to be more strict and uh, block people. You know, we've been generous with space and say, fine, people have democratic space, let people move freely. But from what we have seen, uh, it means that we have to restrict ourselves to allow only voters to go and vote and to allow uh, only um, agents yeah. to be present at the polling stations. I think 
That is the best. And we, requ we, re we, request, we will request all political leaders to at least they have campaigned. They have been given opportunity to campaign. You can see there was no violence uh, during campaigns. But on election date, you find people are coming up, meeting violence against each other. So the best thing would be we, 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 we will only have uh, voters, yeah. have agents, and then any other person who has no, in, no special interest in that particular area, including you don't have a vote. Why don't we all just stay in our respective areas, whether you are in Nairobi or where you are, and wait for people, uh, the citizens to vote okay. and to elect their leader? I think that is what will happen. But what I can say is that we are prepared for any election, as we are prepared for elections any time. Okay. So any time an election comes, we will be prepared to undertake that election. Okay. But whatever you are seeing people saying, maybe we are not prepared, I know it is propaganda geared towards an individual. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Which individual <laughs> it's just is a this? Propaganda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because after all, what has changed? Okay. Yes. We see Sawe here on Twitter says the police are doing a good job. The politicians, especially the ones from Tangatanga, are known to break the law and cry victim. Those protecting them are also police. Politicians have double speak when it comes to police. Flavian Mulama says on the Chesa case, ask Mr. Wino the rationale behind the Chesa being charged in Kiambu as opposed to Mumia's court. Doesn't that amount to forum shopping? what he calls it. But now this crosses into the jurisdiction of uh, the judiciary now. So yeah. I don't think this, unless you want to wade into it, I don't think that comes I think I have no, have no special reason to, yeah. to, to, to comment on that. Okay. Yes. Chris Omondi says, please ask the police spokesperson if it is true that he's going for CIA gubernatorial <laughs> seat come 2022. How would he separate politics from his current duties? Why does he think that he's the best fit for that position? He says he's from Sega. He's asking me to separate politics from my duty. Yes. So he should wait in case uh, I intend to, or in case I'll go, then he should wait for me to go. Okay. For now, I'm a policeman. So he's the one trying to draw my duty into politics. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> he's the one trying to draw my duty. Otherwise, okay. he, sh he, sh he should let me do my work okay. as a police spokesperson. Okay. Yes. Sativo from uh, M Sativo Moore says, if police can enter a person's premises and get away with the cash, do we really trust the police again? This is in regards to a uh, uh, video footage, which I'm sure you've seen, where police, some police officers were caught on tape breaking into a restaurant along, is it um, Gong Road? I've always said yeah. that you don't expect a son of a bishop not to be a thief. You can be, your father can be a bishop, but that does not stop you to become a thief if you choose to be a thief. Even us as policemen, if one of us or two of us decide to steal, there's very little we can do. The only thing we can do is to arrest him, charge him, and strip him of his position as a police officer. Yes, but we, 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 we cannot expect uh, people to be 100% clean. Uh, but for those who commit offenses, that is done. So you cannot say because somebody is a police. You know, no, nobody is born a policeman. These are just a career that people choose uh, to join. Yeah. Yes. But you, you, I saw a statement on this that there was some level of investigations going on and was there, have they been arrested? I suppose so the officers have been charged. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the IGP directed that uh, the investigations be carried and the officers be charged immediately. Yeah. It is confirmed. So what usually happens in that case? Are they then told to step aside as the investigations continue? Because how can people investigate some of No, no, no. We, 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 we interdict you. Yeah. Yes. You, you, once, once we've charged you, you get interdicted normally. Once you are convicted, we suck you. But there are also other cases where we can suck you without... Um, uh, even interdicting you because we have disciplinary measures. What yeah. We have what we call the orderly room proceedings. We can charge you internally. The way you see military have their court martial, we also have our internal uh, disciplinary measures which we carry out, which you can, uh, uh, can let you uh, be relieved yeah. of your services. But as a police spokesperson, don't you think it would be best then to list the people who've been dismissed for, in, for disciplinary cases so that there's no backlash from the public? You see, like that, I knew that it was happening and they've stepped aside already, but people I'm, don't I'm know sure that majority they're there. You know, you know in our, police is the only institution where you find there is a policeman at least in every village in this country. Yeah. And I'm sure every person knows a policeman who has been sacked, including yourself, you know. But you don't so, publish. So, so, no, we do. I, I would know because I'm in the <laughs> we, media, we, but you we, don't publish we do. it. We do publish. We yeah. do 
uh, list officers that we have, we have, we have, we have sacked. But also, uh, remember, ours is to suck you and let you go. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mukabi Kaunya says, for the police spokesperson to say that kidnapping and murder of private citizens is not an indicator of insecurity is a falsehood, then what is? The police have a responsibility to counter organized crime as a criminal activity. I don't think this is what you said, but you can clarify it. Because he's wondering that you mentioned you that. Know, you, know, you know, there are people who don't listen. Yeah. They just pick on issues. So I think, uh, uh, I think somebody else will explain to him what I meant. No, 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 just explain to him because he's <laughs> watching right now. And maybe this no, is no, the no, narrative you know, that you're know, trying to correct. I, I just try to explain that. You see, yeah. for example, if somebody disagrees with his wife in the house and picks a knife and stabs her, yeah. you see, this is, not, this is not a crime that you can, you can, you can prevent uh, as a policeman directly. What happens, or somebody uh, plans to uh, kill an individual, like uh, the lady who was just killed uh, the other day, uh, you find that it may be very difficult to prevent that kind of a, that kind of a crime unless you get intelligence in advance. But what is most important in those kinds of crimes is do we have capacity to investigate and be able to unearth? Yeah. You remember even the case of uh, uh, the Mzungu who was thrown into the septic tank, the one of Mombasa, and so we have a number of cases. It's very clear the DCI team has done a super good job when it comes to homicides. And, and murders, super good job. I don't think we have any case so far that we have not been able to, to, to unearth. So I think it's good to give credit uh, where it belongs. Okay. Yes. Uh, Moses Miner says, when will the police system be computerized and come out of the book of the OB records? Uh, he's aware that we have already uh, started digitalizing uh, the, our, our, our records OB, and yeah. more so uh, the OB. Uh, there is a lot of implication, including financing, and uh, it will take time for us to uh, do complete uh, digitalization of police records. But okay. it's, it's ongoing. So we should be happy that at least uh, it's a process that is ongoing. Okay. And remember, we are just uh, recruiting a large number of specialists, yeah. where I'm sure we are going to having more officers who have done uh, IT. We are, we are bringing in uh, quite a good number uh, of specialized officers. We are going to, I'm sure we are going to recruit pathologists, we are going to recruit uh, chemists, uh, people who have done biological sciences for the purpose of our uh, forensic laboratories. We are going to include uh, IT people, uh, civil engineers, yeah. uh, surveyors, architects. So. I think, fine, the number is still small, it's just 300, but I know, again, the IGP uh, will appeal for more money from government, and yeah. we will get money, and he's committed to ensuring that we develop uh, police to be a, you know, police service cuts across uh, all professions, and these are very noble, a very noble profession. That is why I get shocked yeah. uh, when people uh, want to demean, uh, you know, you want services, from the police service. When you don't get services, you complain. But at the same time, you don't want to make your police look noble. You want police service to look like an ordinary useless job for people who have not gone to school. And yet, at the same time, you want to get services from the same police service. We need to make police as noble uh, as, as possible. I know people rate like military higher uh, than police. I, if I give my son an opportunity to be a cadet in police and in, in, in military. I know he would choose, most likely he'll choose military yeah. because of the public perception. But the kind of job we do is a social job. We interact with you every day. We ensure you have your security. So every job must be respected. Yeah. And we must give it some level of nobility to make sure that it attracts as many people as possible and as good people, as many good people as possible. Okay. So it is the public to make police noble. But the public will always look for a small mistake and paint the police red. We always forget all the good things that we have done for the public. But there are some a few police officers who go against the law, right? Yes, but I've told you yeah. that this is normal. We, we need to accept it as normal as long as there is action taken. I've told you when, when you are in a community, you must have good people, you must have bad people. So even in the service, like in any other profession, even if you go to 
medicine, if you go to the doctors, there are doctors who get sacked. There are doctors who do very many uh, unprofessional things and they get sacked. Uh, there are engineers who get sacked. There are uh, teachers who get sacked. So it's not just the police. It's, it's, it's a societal issue. But because we are expected to maintain law and order, I know expectations are very high. But can we also accept that majority of the policemen are doing a good job? We start from there. And the few who are bad are disciplined. If the few who are bad are left to continue serving and doing wrong things, then that's a different case. Okay. But if action is taken, then I think we just need to support the police. Okay. Yes. Isaac Mudusi says, indeed, our state of security is very good. Currently, robberies and car thefts have gone down. The only issues we are seeing is organized crime, people planning to kill others. CAFU has helped a lot in terms of security. Salute our men and women in uniform. You mentioned the issue of Jennifer Wambua, who uh, was killed the other day, and detectives are now, now visited the scene. What is the level of collaboration between the DCI and the police in terms of investigations on such a homicide case? What people don't understand is yeah. DCI is police. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the DCI is police. Uh, these are formations under the National Police Service. Yeah. Unless maybe you're talking about general duty police, uh, the guys in blue, yeah. uh, like me now, uh, the people working under Deputy Inspector General Edward Bugwa, or uh, the other guys in brown working the, the administration police, the administration police service. We have uh, almost three services, administration police, uh, Kenya Police, that is the general duty, and the Criminal uh, Directorate of um, Criminal Investigations. All these are police officers. All of them serve under the Inspector General. So we undertake very close coordination, and not only within the police. Uh, we have the multi-agency uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, management of investigations. Remember, yeah. our sister brothers from NIS play a very important role uh, even in our investigations. You may not see them, but they support us in investigations. Okay. Yes. So all the multi-agents are used. So the collaboration is extremely good. Okay. Yeah. You see here Salim uh, Casio says, ask Mr. Winnie if police officers undergo psychiatric evaluation during recruitment since some of them behave like beasts when dealing with citizens. This, uh, I think, is directly police brutality. And yes, I mentioned that this would be an honest conversation, so I'll just yes, pose the but, questions uh, as they are asked. Yes, but uh, you see, uh, psychiatric issues, yeah. some come when you're already employed eh, because of the kind of scenes. You see, we are always the first people at, at scenes of crime. Uh, a very grisly accident, it's a policeman. Uh, a very bad murder, it's a policeman. A body which is completely rotten in water or in the bush, it's a policeman. Uh, there's a bad scene of uh, terror attack, it's a policeman. So there are people that their personalities may be weak and uh, in the process of working, uh, they may get affected in terms of psychiatric uh, uh, problems or as you grow yeah. you may develop a situation so those things they happen uh, but that does not mean that you cannot completely you, you can completely eliminate possibility of having a psychiatric case within the service it okay. happens it can happen but you do have a system of dealing with it because I know there's a, in the police service there's a psychiatrists and also Yes, yes, we have. Uh, to help. Yes, we, we have uh, now units uh, yeah. dealing with uh, such matters. And most of our psychiatric cases is a medical issue. So it will always be done appropriately. If we realize that it is an issue that cannot allow you to continue working, then the medical board would recommend that you leave. But it means that we have to pay if it is something that has uh, come in as you work. Yeah. So uh, it will be important. It, we, we, we have procedures okay. for managing such like issues. It, right. sh it should not be something that need to worry a lot. Okay. Yes. Ochonjo Duncan says, ask we know there are those men and uh, seen man, man handling an IBC official who's a lady in one of the just concluded by elections. Has the individuals been arrested and even charged? Yes, they have. Okay. Yes. That's a direct answer. So they've been charged and... Uh, They've been arrested also. If there is any who is still at large, yes. I know the police will catch up with them. Okay. Yeah.
Tony, Tony Amonio says, why would police officers be working in a place for more than five years to an extent that they now behave like villagers, even helping thieves to rob people there? What happens when a robber is found with a police firearm? It's rare to have officers work for more than five years, but there may be a special reason where an officer has worked in a place for more than five years, especially when we talk about specialized officers who are doing specialized duties, it would be different. For example, if an officer is a pilot, uh, how would we remove him from police airway? Yeah. And, and that, is, that is where he works. An officer is a forensic expert, a ballistic expert. He will always be at CID headquarters. So uh, it is the DCI headquarters, it is important to note that sometimes, yes, officers may overstay for one reason or another, but it is rare to have officers overstaying in one area. Okay. Yeah. I have to take a quick break here, but there are many questions coming through, and I have a soundbite from Senator Kipchumba Murkomen here. Let's play th that first and then take this break, because I think it's related to a question that Sir Rawlings is asking. Yes. Very sad. When I saw my friend, um, friend Matiangu, we used to hustle with him before he became a minister. When he was ordering courts to give certain amount of punishment to politicians, when in true sense, it is the court, it was because the court gave orders that protected Mr. Matiangi from being prosecuted on the Ruarara land case. The same, same court that protected him, he must appreciate that all citizens of this republic deserve similar protection. And I, let me tell him, because I used to be a majority leader, power is transient. There was a time I used to laugh and joke and enjoy time with the president, and he sends me to do this and that and that. But I always had it in my conscience that this position I hold is temporary. Let's bring in what the CS for Interior said, actually, is to set the context of that conversation. In, uh, in, in violence, in criminals, during the 2017 general elections, the cases have not been had to date. We're facing another election next year. We arrest these people, we take them before a, a magistrate, the DPP arrives there, and they are promptly released on 20,000 shillings bond. Americans are arrested drug dealers from Mombasa, who are used to actually walking in and out of court. And the matter has been had, determined, and sorted out. And when you read some of those confidential reports, which I can't reveal because of the oath of office and so on, nothing will pain you as a patriotic Kenyan, about the things they say about some of our senior officials. It would not be fair to wade into a political feud between the two, but there's a fundamental issue that's coming up here. Is the judiciary the weakest link in the fight against crime in the country? No, we, we can't say that. Uh, the minister was simply meeting his frustrations yeah. uh, because what he's trying to say is that the police do a very good job and have people taken to court. But when they go to court, the cases take too long to be concluded. Yeah. And when cases take too long to be concluded, it promotes impunity. He has a feeling that if people would be taken to court and the matters concluded immediately, and the person's convicted, then this is the only way you can manage impunity. He's human. He's the minister in charge of, he's the CS in charge of security. And you have just had, Yourself, you are saying that we were, there was inaction in Matungu. Yeah? And the, inaction, the action is not just a matter of arresting and yeah. taking to court. It should not end there. After arresting and somebody has been taken to court, the matters must be concluded as fast as possible. So he's human. He's, he's the CS in charge of interior and in charge of security. He knows how impunity grows when people manage to manage other institutions. So it, it's a very humble position which is yeah. putting forward that the other institutions, after his people have done their work, should also support his institution by supporting the other people. Okay. But the rest are politics. And politics, as you know it, it serves individual interests. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, as, and as a policeman, yeah. uh, I would, I would keep off it. Okay. Yes. I want to take a quick break here. When we come back, there's still a lot of your questions coming through. We'll pose all of them to Charles Owen. He's still with us. He's the police spokesperson. Keep them coming at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We're back in just a bit.